Hi everybody, thank you for joining me. Welcome to Friendship Shaving in the Kitchen. I'm your host Mark and I had an unboxing for you. Unfortunately the video went awry so I have opened the boxes but I thought in remaking this video I would take the opportunity to show you some things that I've got in and to talk about some things coming up that I'm quite excited about and I thought this was a good opportunity to show you my Yaki Final Cut razor with the numbers painted in. If you missed it I made a video just the other day where I was painting in the numbers on this razor and I think you'll agree it's turned out really very well. The number four was really the one that needed the second coat, although I did a second coat on all the numbers. All those hard angles on the number four didn't quite get all of the paint the first time round. But there we are. Very pleased with that indeed. I hope it's showing up in this bright light. So that is my Yaki Final Cut with the numbers painted. Thank you for the interest you showed in that painting the numbers video. Now I've got my birthday present here. It came from my friend Sven. So I'd like to say Sven, thank you very, very much. Got an amazing present here, guys. And it is from Stando Showing Accessories, which are in Poland. And it comes in this lovely tin. Presentation is beautiful. Has these little rollers on the edge that just unclip like that. And uh, they roll. It's absolutely fantastic. There we are. The tin lid comes off. And inside... We have one of the Stando razors and it's printed on a piece of wood, a piece of hardboard or something like that. And you can see it's made to look like a stamp. And on the back there is a little magnet so you can put it on your fridge or wherever. And I think that is really terrific. Now, I'm going to mount that on the inside of my shaving cabinet in the bathroom somehow. Um, but I love that. I think that is a really nice touch. Got the tin and the razor. And there we go, it's stuck on. So inside we've got a nice bag. Stando razors. 2017 is a stainless steel razor and this is the Zoria head and it is a mild head there we are it is a mild head with a 0 0.90 blade gap and the handle which is lovely is a Lanka handle. I think I'm saying that correctly. But that is a very nice looking razor indeed. I think you'll agree. Um, I love it. Now, Sven bought me this handle on purpose because uh, he thinks it's really comfortable to hold and to shave with. And on first holding it, I have to agree, it's incredibly nice to hold. There's the balance point. With the, this little thinner bit here, it takes a little bit of weight out of the handle. And uh, that is really nice. And it's so well made. That it's even got a little indent on the bottom of the base plate for this little nylon washer and so much so that I'll quite 
it's quite a challenge getting it out sometimes. There we are, there's a washer. And it just fits into that little space there. You can see that the posts don't come all the way through from the head cap. So nice small posts. It's got satin finish inside and out. I have to say, it's a beautiful thing. It's really nicely finished. So I'm very much looking forward to using this one. got to say I do like the handle so that's that's my fantastic birthday present thank you Sven absolutely made up with that beautiful thing so we'll put that away now I've got some exciting news I've been in conversation with those good folk at Above the Tie. Do you remember when I was shaving with my Above the Tie SE1? I have it here. There we are, there's a the box. And that's my SE1, a single edged razor. Well, they watched the video and they liked it. And they've offered me uh, an affiliate relationship with them. And uh, I'm very excited about that. It will um, mean that they're going to send me a couple of razors on loan. And I have plenty of time to play with them and get used to them and do comparisons. And then I send them back. And uh, I think that's a great way of doing business as somebody that comes on YouTube and reviews razors as my hobby. To be able to borrow razors like that just really takes the pressure off me because I'm not getting anything for free and uh, I really like that. So there'll be some above the tie razors coming to the den very soon and uh, keep an eye out for that because I'm, I'm quite chuffed. And of course an affiliate relationship will mean that there will be a reduction for any of you that want to buy from above the tie. Now next thing I've got in is a straight razor. I bought this uh, with two other razors, two other straight razors. And the other two, they're okay. There's nothing special about them. One of them's the scales are broken, and, but I might be able to do those up and get my money back. However, this is the one that I wanted. It is a Silver Star razor, as you can see. Now, I've given that a wipe with a cloth, but there's kind of a pinkness to that that is not showing up on the camera I don't think but I think once that is cleaned and uh, restored properly that is going to be absolutely stunning the scales are celluloid and here is the blade the silver star 10 shillings and that says it comes from, oh, it just says Hollow Ground, Germany. So there we are. That is my most recent straight razor acquisition. It looks like there's some tape or something on the back. Perhaps the remains of some sticky tape. So I'm not going to mess about with this one, guys, because... These old celluloid scales are really thin and I don't want to break them. So I'm going to send those off and hopefully can get something, I don't know, something bright, a bit of acrylic put behind each scale. Make them a little bit wider just to firm them up a bit and really make that pop. 
So I'll get that done. I'm looking forward to shaving with the Silver Star. I love it. Now I've got another little razor in, a vintage Gillette. This one is a flat bottomed new. Now I've bought this from a gentleman in Australia, Ron. Thank you, Ron. And uh, it looks nice and shiny. At first glance, very nice indeed. This one is finished in a bright chrome. Um, the plating on this is, I have to be honest, it's not a patch on what I get from Chris at Back Rogues Gold. I don't know if you will be able to see in the light, but I don't think you will. It's been over polished on the handle, so nearly all of the detail is gone from around here. There's not much detail in this, it's not very crisp. And rather oddly there is a lot of plating on the top, so much so that the top in parts has a little bit of a ripple in it. And um, yeah, it really shows up when you catch the light, of course, as these things do. There's also some swirls on the top where it's been given its final polish. So I will be taking a polishing cloth to that and just buffing that out by hand and seeing if I can reduce those little those little waves, those little ripples. It's also quite odd that the um, the bottom is plated, but those little bits there are not. I didn't even know that was possible, but that is an odd thing anyway. So definitely not as good. It was sent off by Ron to be plated by a gentleman in New Zealand. And uh, then it came back to Ron and he sent it out to me. Gave me the opportunity to buy this because it is a very rare razor indeed. The flat bottomed. Goodwill Razor, made in England. Um, I'm very pleased to have this. Unlike the standard British Goodwill, which has circular indents on the inside of the head cap, and the American Goodwill has square indents, this one has oblong indents. So, just slightly different. And Ron very kindly put in a little washer and matched the black case with a Gillette 7 o'clock blade. So that was a nice touch. I'm pleased with that, Ron. Thank you. The case, actually, is in very nice condition. Certainly on that part is. That's been kept really, really well. On the outside, well, they came in a number of colours, these cases. So I'll be cleaning that there. There's a couple of spots where the leather is missing. I've got a little bit of leather filler that I can use on that bit. And then I shall just patch it in with a permanent marker and nobody will see any different. But that is the case. That is my flat bottomed. Goodwill razor and finally guys <clears throat> I'm hoping you can help me with my Gibbs adjustable razor here it is now I've taken this apart more times than I can remember and I've put it back together and I've never had a problem and what I'm finding is but I'm putting it back together 
and the dial is not lining up with number one, no matter which way I do it. It's kind of going from five to five, and I just, I can't work out what I'm doing, guys. I'm obviously having a brain fart, because there's something going on here. So I've taken the bottom off, taken the handle off. They come apart really easily. Taking the adjuster off. And you can see it's got that red dot on it. So I know that the red dot is near the numbers. I know that's the right way round. That won't go on properly the other way round. It all comes apart. It's got the spring. Now I've tried the spring every which way. I've tried it upside down and the right way up, whichever way that is. The head cap goes into here. I've tried this both ways around. So I've put it a different way to what it was a moment ago. The spring sits on there. That sits into here. And this will only go on one way around because the, the little end caps here are different sizes and they match up. So once I've done that, squeeze it all together. Put on the number and it goes straight to that spot about the number five. The spring makes no difference going the other way, as I said, that one doesn't seem to screw on right when it's upside down. It screws on, but I mean that's not right, that's definitely upside down. So I've tried and set it at number one there, if you can see in the light. The light's not very good in here today, guys. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, then the handle just screws in. It's got a brass part there. It won't go on that way. So I'll be honest with you guys, it's pretty foolproof. And I just don't know what's happened. If it works this time, I'll be cheering. So everything is nice and tight. The lid's down. It all fits properly. We're going from number one all the way around. Two, three, four, five. And it stops. It won't go to number six. If I come back the other way, it goes from one and then back to six. So what's happening is that when I'm on one, it's not the smallest blade gap because there's still a tiny bit of play there in the head because of that spring. Guys, if you know what I'm doing, please let me know because this is getting to the point now where it's doing my head in. So that is my short video for today. Now I shall go and get this out immediately. Thanks very much indeed for joining me and I'll see you for a collaborative shave coming up on the next video. I'll be shaving in a collaboration with Henry from the YouTube channel HD Shaves. So keep an eye out for that one guys and I will see you very shortly. Take care now. Bye-bye.